Now let us go and create a composite row. Now before we create a composite row, uh, let us go back to that configuration parameters and uh, set it to uh, the generation parameters that we had said no. Let's reset them back to yes because composite role when you create a composite role it has to go through the risk analysis uh, step and if it finds risks and when we are saying here the role cannot be generated so we have to say let's say yes to this because even in composite role because single roles are involved we need to generate the roles again. Okay, so that's one of the phases in composite roles. Okay, now since we have done that, let's close this and let's restart from the beginning. Okay, so let's go back. and go back to NWBC. Okay, go to Access Management. Under Role Management, click on Role Maintenance. Okay, now what we're trying to do, we are going to create a composite role. Now composite role as you all know is a collection of a container for single roles. Okay. Okay. So it's the same in the way as uh, what we did for single roles, you have the same role attributes and uh, the only difference is the maintain authorizations, there are some derived roles, those phases are not available for composite role. However, you have to do the risk analysis and then generate the roles because the phase generate role is also there because composite roles contain uh, single roles. Okay, so let's go and start defining our role. SAP landscape. Okay, the role naming convention starts from here. Start picking. Start picking up your um, business process. the process, project release, and now you give the name. Now, because in the name convention, right, we, we had given it as ampersand. Okay, so that's why you have it as an ampersand here. Let's see quickly where that is. SP RO. Access control, role management, methodology, processes and steps. Right, click on this. Oh, not here, my bad. You are actually, we need to look at uh, the role naming convention, right? So go here and this is a composite role, right? and we are enforcing it and you see the second character is an ampersand for composite roles and like for single role we saw colon okay so this is where this thing is coming from okay the ampersand okay let's go back and start defining our role so say p Zero, zero, zero. 
and let's say okay, payable manager okay all right so let's say give a description Don't have to give the profile name. Save. And now let's fill up the remaining role attributes. Okay. You need critical level, sensitivity. This could be used, these two attributes could be used for workflow. Okay. And functional area. This attribute also can be used in workflow for direct redirecting the process and flow for uh, approvals. So finance. Let's save company. Select the company to which this composite role I belong to. Save. Assign the owners and approvers. Okay, primary owner is FI owner and alternate owner is Alt F. Alt FI owner. Select these two check boxes. Save again. Now, under the roles tab, you can assign the roles. Because this is a composite rule, you have to assign the single roles. Okay, so click on add. Search for the role name or a pattern for the role names. Okay. All right, so let's do this. So we can go and assign, so select the role that you want to give. AP manager. Okay, so let's take this. Ah, you need to select and put it in the selected section. All right, so let's take um, this one, okay? and click on this button to add. So the second row is added. Save it. Now we are doing it, not doing anything. All right, so go to additional details, click on provisioning. Or you can first, uh, in detailed description, you can give the detailed description about the role. Let's say testing composite roles. Okay, save. Click on provisioning and make sure, like I said, if you want this role to be available for provisioning, that role status has to be production. I'm not doing anything else here. We know what attachment, what you can do in attachments. You know what you see in PHCG, okay? And you know what you can see in change history. Save. Click on define role so that you get the save and continue button. All right, so click on save and continue. Now you're forced to, you have to run the analyze access risks, okay? You have to run this report. So select your rule set. In our case, it's global. And uh, select all the actions that you need, but on the type of uh, information you want, in your report, click on foreground. Okay, so you see there are some conflicts here. Ideally, it should be, with be the role should be without conflicts, but if you see the conflicts, you either then you can either uh, mitigate the risk by assigning a mitigating control to the risks, or you remediate the risk by removing um, 
what it means is you remove one of the conflicts okay click on save and continue now it says generate the rules right now generate the rules next give the password next so you saw the risks right again you, you, this is another place where you have one more chance for mitigating the risks okay now let's say submit so number of rules generated one and uh, now close now any role to be available in brm for provisioning it has to be in the complete status right so click on save and continue so now it's complete so close okay let's go back here and see the composite role that we created it's in complete status okay now let's go and see uh, in the back end whether we have this role or not and what do we have in it so p ampersand and then search for the role in the back end system we are now in the back end system all right oh the composite role right so it has to be composite role all right so this is the role that we created right click on display and you can see the composite roles that were given assigned to the the single roles that were assigned to the composite role okay so this is how you create um the composite role okay so next we will see how to create derived roles